I'm Dan Cohen. I'm a professor of pediatrics and family and community medicine at the University of Minnesota, where I also direct the behavioral pediatrics program. Favorite story or two that you could tell us about hypnosis? Well, I have a, I have a favorite story and two, so two. Um, recently, I saw a young man with aneurysis, very common problem, nocturnal aneurysis, uh, about nine and a half years old, and um, he had never been dry, and. Uh, except on perhaps as much as a once a week basis or about 14% of the time. And he was very motivated to become dry and I did what I conventionally do in, in a first visit, spend time developing our relationship and rapport, getting his history and giving him information about how the body works and he went home with uh, the instruction to keep track of when he was dry and not to spend much time thinking about the uh, the way the body works and that we would really get into doing some training at the subsequent visit. So he learned hypnosis at the second visit and by the third visit this youngster had become about, as I recall, about 85 percent dry, which is, uh, while not uh, rare, uh, unusual to do quite that quickly. I, I think more a reflection of his motivation and his, like most children, quick learning of hypnosis. Um, he. Uh, but what's compelling about it for me is his formulation of his understanding of it. And when I asked him how it is that he did that, he said, well, I'm, uh, it's just because my brain is the president of the United States of my body. And I thought that that was uh, as good a way of saying it as, as so many of our researchers could say. Um, the other case that comes to mind is uh, that of a young woman, 17 years old, who I saw at our teenage medical service um, which is uh, part of the Children's Hospital Center in Minneapolis and was one of the first, if not the first, uh, free clinic uh, for in the upper Midwest for young people to come to and get confidential and anonymous uh, health care. Um, she came in, she was a, what we call a street kid. She'd been on the street for a couple of years, uh, you know, kind of a tumultuous social background and uh, in this occasion she had been sick for about two days uh, or so she said and and indeed, even walking into the clinic, she, she looked quite ill. She was kind of hunched over, uh, walking with great difficulty. And it turned out that she had been vomiting for a couple of days. She gave a story of classical for appendicitis with mid-abdominal pain, the, with the pain migrating to the right lower quadrant of her belly, and uh, no bowel movements, and loss of appetite, and so forth. And, and she was, uh, besides being quite sick, she was um, quite anxious, as, as we might predict. So in taking her story and then uh, examining her, I did as I often do with uh, adolescents who are, who are in a position of being anxious and, uh, and not, not particularly wanting to take their clothes off in the presence of somebody they've never met before, uh, asked her to pay attention to her breathing while I was listening to her lungs and to just notice the way the shoulders relax as she breathes out. And she did that very nicely, uh, giving her also suggestions about the ease of uh, conducting the pelvic exam, which would be coming afterwards. And so the examination of her abdomen was really quite classical for appendicitis. And then she moved into lying down so we could do the pelvic examination, which she did quite easily, having quickly learned relaxation to allow that exam to proceed with as little discomfort as possible. Um, that exam actually confirmed the appendicitis. and. We set about getting her over to the hospital so she could see a surgeon and have her appendix removed. I offered her the post-hypnotic suggestions that uh, she'd uh, be surprised how easy she could heal, that now that she uh, was being seen and that we knew what the problem was, that because everything that should be done and could be done was being done, there was no reason for her to have discomfort, no reason to have further vomiting, and uh, that she could heal quickly, et cetera. Unfortunately, because she was a minor, uh, she couldn't officially give consent for the surgery for herself, and they set about trying to find her parents unsuccessfully and then moving to the next step of getting the court to uh, give permission for her to have surgery uh, because, of course, it was in her best interest to do so. All of that took about uh, 12 to 14 hours, delaying what should have been an earlier procedure. Nonetheless, even with the delay and the anxiety and and all of the rest of that, she uh, had no further vomiting, she had no discomfort requiring a medication of any kind, and she sailed through the surgical procedure 
<clears throat> surprising uh, everybody with uh, how calm she was and, and even being hungry to the point of uh, having lunch uh, within a couple of hours of the conclusion of the surgery. Um, I, f I found out the surgeon did know, had knew nothing about the hypnosis part of things. Uh, he actually had written in the chart that there had been surprisingly little blood loss, uh, even putting an exclamation point after that in his notes. And that was, again, confirmation for me of how effectively she used uh, hypnosis for herself. And if we have one more minute, maybe I could ask you one more time how you first learned about hypnosis. Right. Well, my first uh, experience with hypnosis was when I was an undergraduate in, uh, in uh, college and went to a, uh, a rush party, uh, party for uh, encouraging people to join fraternities and uh, this particular party uh, I, I actually didn't go many people did go as freshmen I was already a junior in college and I went along with a friend of mine and out of interest and they were having a stage hypnotist and I discovered at the time that I was uh, quite hypnotizable though I didn't know that word at the time um, I was invited along with three or four other people to come up to the front of the group the group was about 75 or 80 people as I recall and so I was one of the demonstration subjects. Um, and I found out uh, the following day by finding my picture on the front page of the university newspaper. Um, I was a bit surprised um, to discover that. Later, uh, I would discover the power of the post-hypnotic suggestion. And a few years later, while in medical school, I remembered the name of this uh, psychologist who had done the uh, stage hypnosis demonstration. And, we invited him to our medical fraternity to uh, see about what he could what he could say and do there. And he was a bit more clinically oriented. He did some of the same demonstrations. He talked about the facility of this, these techniques in the smoking cessation and uh, obesity world that was uh, more common, in, I suppose, in those days. Uh, and um, and then I forgot all about it completely for I would say the next about five or six years until. Uh, I had been working in the Indian Health Service following my uh, residency training in pediatrics and was about to make a change in career and uh, went to Minneapolis to look at a position in medical education at the Children's Hospital there and interviewed with uh, my friend and who would become my colleague for, for low these next 25 years current illness. And while she was on the phone at one point during uh, part of our interview time, I was uh, looking around her office and on the desk in front of me there was a bibliography on children and hypnosis and I asked myself what am I doing here, what have I gotten myself into and then asked her about it and she very nonchalantly said sure uh, yeah I do that um, help yourself and it was, this bibliography uh, had a number of references on it of what was available and known in the field at that time so I set about looking it up and some months later I think by accident, if I believe in coincidences anymore, I'm not sure, uh, I got a brochure for a regional workshop of the uh, American Society of Clinical Hypnosis that was happening in Phoenix and had the good fortune to have my first training um, include teachers uh, like Milton Erickson and Kate Thompson and Bob Pearson and, and uh, others who I would discover at that meeting were really the stalwarts in the, in the field. Uh, and uh, I consider it uh, very lucky that I had that opportunity. Thank you for sharing that, and thank you again for an extended time with me today. <laughs> thank you for having me.